So welcome everybody. The webinar is now being recorded and we are delighted to welcome you to the NIA Nano in Business webinar Opportunities for European Funding for the Nanotech Industry in 2020 and Beyond. And of course this is highly relevant as we get to the last year of Horizon 2020 and look to, into Horizon Europe and how it will impact um, nanotechnology research and, and commercial development. I'm going to give you a short introduction from NIA before handing over to our set of infinitely more qualified speakers. So our agenda for today, uh, you'll have the short intro from me and then you will, we will hand you over to our colleagues at Hub Brussels who have very kindly agreed to do pretty much most of the hard work in this webinar, uh, talking about uh, what the NMVP framework is currently up to and what opportunities are coming, but also looking at uh, how we are evolving beyond the SME instrument into the EIC accelerator. Then we will look at Horizon Europe, which will be the next uh, framework program coming online. And for the old school people in the room, I think that would be framework program nine. Um, and then we will look to some direct industrial case studies from having taken part in FP7 and Horizon 2020 funding from, to, from opposite ends of the spectrum. We have Chemical, um, a small company that has been very active and using the funding to help build its own um, structure and development. And we have Solvay, who uses projects from a much more strategic perspective. And so each of those will give you a short overview of how they participated and what they found valuable. Because it's very important that when you look at um, EU funding and indeed any funding, that you, it fits in very strongly with your business rationale and your ability to work well within projects. They are not easy money for fast scale up. Uh, it has to fit very closely to your company mission and strategy, and it needs to be manageable within the financial framework that you already have. So, but I will leave those to those comments through to our expert presenters today. So. There's no such thing as a free lunch, of course, so I'm going to give you a very short introduction to NIA, although hopefully many of you will be familiar with us from previous webinars and through work that we do and put out through our newsletter. As the name suggests, we represent nanotechnology industrial development worldwide. And, we, and for a very interesting emerging technology, we look at all aspects that will help bring it to market. So we look primarily at the regulatory framework that has grown up uh, initially through programs such as REACH, but now these are becoming more nano-specific or bringing in nano-specific elements to their text and legal requirements. And that's very important for that they are both that they are robust and workable for industrial development and also that companies and researchers are aware of how the regulatory pathways that are nano-specific unfold before them. We also do a lot of business and scientific networking and promotion for our members because they are all fabulous. They work across all countries and materials and sectors. And so there's an awful lot to learn from networking, even between themselves. And finally, we work with many of our members, plus organizations such as the European Commission and national governments, to try and help build the ecosystem for nanotechnology. So that can involve ourselves being in um, somewhat large EU projects that look at concepts such as safe, safe by design, look at nanomaterial definitions, you know, the things that allow organizations to operate within nanotechnology products and processes. Yeah. Our members are pretty diverse, as you can see here, and I just have a few examples. Uh, the, the association was founded quite some years ago, I think probably 14 or 15 years ago now, in response to the need for nano-specific feedback to regulatory frameworks and government policies as they were becoming more nano-specific. And so a lot of the large companies you see in nano were part of the original founding team. But we also have a, a, a growing number of small to mid-sized companies, and we often act as their sort of regulatory eyes and ears. So watching out what's coming down the pipeline in all different countries and all different sectors and helping them be ready for that. And we also, of course, help with their promotion and networking. Our research community is very important, and I can see a number of people in the webinar today from there. 
uh, they are a very important element to the expertise that we have, given that the technologies, particularly around characterization for nano, are still developing very quickly. Then we have our specialist service providers, who are another critical element, uh, because they are often extremely expert in very precise areas. So we always know where to go for an expert opinion on something. And finally, we have our um, other association networks, um, and we're delighted to have them. I'm just getting a message from um, GoToMeeting that my audio was disrupted, so I hope that you can hear me okay still. So that really brings us to the end of my extremely fast um, tour of NIA, because we've got a lot to talk about today. So I'm going to welcome our first presenter and hand over the screen to Virginia. So Virginia, the screen should be coming towards you right now and you can switch your screen on. Super. Yes. Lovely, hey. so I'll put myself on mute, Virginia, and you can run through our first set of presentations for today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Claire, for uh, this introduction. Yeah, it's my, uh, my name is uh, Virginia Gomez. I'm a MCP for NMP Transport and Space here in, in based in Brussels, in Hub Brussels. And I will talk to you a bit about the NMVP framework program. But not only, I will also focus a bit on, um, on the European Defence Industrial Development Programme and the European Defence Fund, uh, where to look at, because sometimes maybe it's not the first uh, reflex, but there could be interesting opportunities for nanotechnologies industries uh, as well. So getting into it, the nanotechnologies, advanced materials, biotechnology and advanced manufacturing and processing work programme of 2014 uh, until 2020 had a budget of 3.8 billion euros. Uh, and it has to be said that for next year, it will be the largest year of the program in terms of uh, budget. So there are three calls, the foundations for tomorrow's industry with uh, more than 160 million euros, transforming European industry, which has the largest pack, more than 200 million euros, and the colon industrial sustainability with 100 euros plus 20 million euros uh, coming from other programs. And also the cross-cutting um, initiative, competitive low carbon and circular industries with more than 100 uh, million euros. So some lessons learned from the interim evaluation to understand the changes in the last uh, work program from 2019-18 to 2020. So the number of topics were reduced to be able to increase the average funding per topic. And they also decreased the TRL levels to increase the leverage of industrial partners in demonstrators. And also they want to see a widest uh, range of users in the activities through co-creation. Uh, important to say as well that the main targets as is uh, repeatedly said by the Commission, are on climate action and sustainable development. Uh, a point of, point of attention, some topics uh, provide now funding at 50% for profit-making entities uh, in some innovation actions instead of the usual 70%. So please read very carefully the topic uh, text um, before going into it. So for the call foundations for tomorrow's uh, industry, you can see here uh, the list of, of calls. So I will not go into details in all of them. They are uh, in, the, in the slides that are coming. So you can read all the details uh, later on. You see you have a bunch of calls that are with the first deadline, the 12th of December this year. So these calls are two stage calls and the ones with deadline uh, the 5th of February 2020, uh, they are all single stage uh, calls. Um, for next year, we have um, a good set of coordination and support actions uh, focusing on monitoring and safety of transport infrastructure, incentivizing e commerce, citizens, and industrial technologies, and also working on towards standardized documentation. So, as I said before, here afterwards, uh, you have all the details per, um, per topic on, uh, on the levels of TRL, 
the proposal budgets uh, that they are expected and the call uh, the, the call budget so you can then have an idea of how many uh, proposals they have in mind to fund uh, per, per topic. In the case of open innova innovation test beds, um, what it's known is that the, the part of non-enabled bio-based uh, materials will have the largest uh, bunch of, of, uh, of the whole budget uh, that is now described here for the three of the topics. So the same information you have for all, uh, all the calls, so I will not uh, repeat myself um, and uh, well, you can have a look at it uh, um, quietly when you get the, the slides. Um, for the call on transforming European industry, uh, here again we have a set of, of, of topics with a deadline December this year. Again, these two are um, these are two state uh, topics. Uh, here you have to pay attention. There is a research and innovation action with a, the lump sum uh, model, um, and uh, also here in the single state of the fifth of February, the topic on pilot lines for large part high precision manufacturing is one of the innovation actions funded at 50%. Um, in this call, we have the last uh, topic uh, of the whole uh, program uh, with deadline 15th of April on the new biotechnologies to remediate harmful uh, contaminants, a research and innovation action. So again, you can find uh, all the details uh, here later on. And I will move very quickly to the call on industrial sustainability. Um, here we have uh, again one topic, two stage topic for the 12th of December, and the rest are uh, single stage for the 5th of February. And here in this call, the only uh, coordination and support action is the one on artificial intelligence and intelligence and big data technologies uh, for process industries. Uh, again, you can find all the information uh, later on. Uh, what I also wanted to mention that is uh, certainly worthy to look at other programs, like uh, the one um, of large-scale research initiatives on future battery technologies. You have here all the codes and, and titles. Um, they are focusing on novel methodologies for autonomous discovery of advanced battery chemistries sensing fun functionalities for smart battery cell chemistries, uh, self-healing functionalities for lasting battery cell chemistries, and coordinate and support large-scale research initiative on future battery technologies, and the uh, cross-cutting activities, competitive, low-carbon, and circular industries has two calls that were previously in an MVP program that moved uh, later on. The ERANET on uh, materials uh, supporting the circular economy and sustainable development goals and the materials life cycle sustainability analysis. So I mentioned uh, before, uh, there are other actions as well where it could be interesting for the nanotechnology uh, industry to look at. The European Defense Industrial Development Programme offers co-financing for collaborative defense development projects and had a budget of 500 million euros for these two years, 2019 and 2020. Uh, there are no more calls that will be open in this year, in 2019, but 12 uh, calls are announced for 2020, even, but still the, the text is not uh, made available. For the, the European Defence Fund, uh, there will be a financial framework on 2021 until 2027, with an expected uh, funding of 13 uh, billion euros. I also wanted to let you know that there is, uh, for the Brussels-based companies and also other possibilities of funding, uh, especially through Innovities, there will be a call opening um, beginning of next year on the Eramin 2 for raw materials sector, 
uh, there will be an, in, an information session uh, the 6th of December, so we will know more about it uh, at that time, um, and you can always contact us for, uh, for more information. So here you have also a set of useful links. Um, I realize I went pretty quick through all the information, um, but if you have uh, details, questions, we can answer later on on the questions and answers or offline uh, of the webinar. Um, with this, yeah, I thank you for your attention. And uh, Claire, I move back to you again. Well, I was thinking that you would continue straight with your uh, next presentation, as you are, you have all of the pre next presentations. Okay, yeah. Then it's um, my colleague, um, Elena Angiolini. I will then introduce her. Super. <laughs> uh, she's our MCP for, for SME and access to risk, risk finance and uh, she's in charge uh, about on the AIC accelerator, so she has all the latest uh, information. So, Elena. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, thank you very much uh, for the invitation uh, to this webinar this morning. So, um, we're going to uh, have a sort of um, quite quick overview of the new tools uh, created by the European Commission uh, for um for small and medium enterprises uh, dedicated to i mean the accelerator so in particular uh, just to give you an overview the eic enhanced its pilot um, it's um it's the european it's the novelty of uh, of the european commission about it it is called european innovation council and they support to uh, innovators to create um, new, well, new, new innovations, I would say, uh, in order to create new markets um, and at the same time leverage private, private uh, finance. Uh, and uh, the structure of the European Innovation Council, uh, it's basically uh, split in two pillars. One is the pathfinder and one is the accelerator. Concerning the uh, the Pathfinder, we are going just to give a, a really um, a short uh, presentation. It's uh, concer concerning the um, um, basic research, so um, dedicated to um, uh, radically new technologies uh, emerging from uh, collaborative research. Uh, so the technology readiness level, so the maturity of the project is really low. So from the proof of concept to demonstration, and um, and then it's also a um, um, uh, collaboration project. So you are um, you need to find a new some partners to to apply. Going to the accelerator, which is the main topic of today, it's dedicated to startups, SMEs, and uh, um, and in general uh, to entrepreneurs, um, aiming to scaling up. So scaling up uh, a project, um, so it could be uh, a, a also a more experienced or mature uh, enterprise, um, but uh, well, enterprise an SME, uh, but still with a, a, a a project with a potential, a new project or an innovative idea with a potential to exploit new markets. Um, just to give you an overview of uh, the, 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 the development uh, of um, and the, um, I would say, the technology readiness uh, level of the project. So if you can see here in the, in the slide that the EIC Pathfinder, it's about uh, the well, the pre-seed um, phase of an innovation cycle, while the EIC accelerator, it's about uh, the um, uh, startup and growth um, 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 phase. So it's more uh, oriented to market and, and deployment from demonstration to scale up. So it's um, to cover the so-called um, valley of debt. So in the moment of a startup, uh, it's, uh, it's willing to, um, to, to grow and uh, um, increase uh, revenues, uh, but also the production. So it needs some somehow investment. Uh, so from one side, uh, 
we need uh, the development of innovation, but also the uh, you know um, investments uh, to to I mean to survive uh, the 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 phase uh, of uh, preparation to the market exploitation. And so, um, European Commission comes to uh, well to to support the companies uh, in this specific phase, like the valley of uh, of that. And uh, the solution is uh, the possibility to apply for a, a blended finance, uh, which means uh, the the possibility to apply for a grant and uh, um, plus uh, the option for an equity up to 15 million of euro and um, the um, who are the i mean uh, the the i would say the criteria to apply are you the or who are the kind of the best um, the best candidate for for the accelerator um well um it's for very high uh, i mean it's for the best of the best so it means uh, the 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 real excellence uh, of uh, you in in europe um, so it's open to smes startup uh, or based in europe and um, associated countries to horizon 2020 and um, with uh, um, a project with um, high risk but at the same time high potential um to create new 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 markets and at the same time as the european commission said it's a, a project which is not be bankable which is the definition of uh well in this well for the european commission the, this the definition is like um um it's uh, the, the risk uh it's about the traditional vc and the bank, uh, fa bank finance. So it means that uh, for the moment, uh, the project uh, it's, um, uh, it, well, has an, uh, a really high potential in the future, but at the moment it's too risky for a private uh, venture capitalist. And so um, the, 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 the European Commission uh, in this sense uh, comes to, 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 to help and support uh, companies and um, plays the role as um, I would say facilitator and uh, to attract uh, able to attract a new uh, new venture capitalist and um, so about the the budget uh, it's about um, for the grant part so for the development of the innovation uh, part it's up to 2.5 million of euro and the equity can be negotiated uh, up to 15, uh, 15 million. million. Um, so about uh, um, the, um, I would say the, uh, the potential of uh, the, the grant to blend it fine, well, the, the, the grant to the grant plus uh, blended finance it's uh, the novelty is, is the well if uh, on the, the the grant uh, it's covering only eligible costs uh, dedicated to this the specific project uh, the equity uh, can cover uh, marketing commercial exploitation uh, and um, commercial the de de deployment uh, so all the activities we are not uh, officially eligible uh, with uh, with a grant because uh, are covered by the um, uh, horizon 2020 rules um, uh, so it means that uh, the, the grant, it's about, uh, as we said, the, the development of the innovation itself. So if I have a, a, a project which is already tested uh, or um, operational in a um, um, large, in a small scale, then with the, thanks to the grant, I can uh, test and develop uh, the, the technology up to a final product uh, or, um, or also a um, uh, procedure or a methodology that could be up and running and be able to be launched on a larger scale. So a pro final product that could be, uh, could be sell, launch on the, on the market in a, in a large scale. 
um, uh, from the next uh, from the next uh, program, uh, so it will be the Horizon uh, Europe. Uh, there will be also the possibility to apply for uh, um, project having on a tier uh, technology readiness level uh, uh, also um, above eight. So it means that they're not eligible anymore for the grant, uh, but they can uh, they can apply for the equity. So it means that. It's, uh, it's still um, quite interesting for all kind of um, company having a innov innovative uh, project. So what are the novelties? Because the well, the novelties because this is uh, the new uh, the new version of a former um, funding scheme called the SME Instrument Phase Two. So the novelty is uh, it's, uh, that the accelerator itself is uh, dedicated to mono beneficiary, so no consortia. Only one uh, small and medium enterprise can apply. Um, so a single uh, uh, small and medium enterprise can apply, and um, which, uh, which and, and that should be based in Europe or in um, associated uh, country. So uh, there's a single template that, uh, that could be um, available um, online on the participant portal. And, um, um, and then you, well, the applicants uh, who have uh, rec well, receiving um, uh, positive evaluation, then the, they, um, they need to, to, well, to pass by a due diligence for, uh, for the equity part. And uh, the novelties is also there's a, a new well the, the pitch deck for the interview it should be submitted um, since the beginning so during the first uh, the submission of the 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 the, the, the first uh, template um, and then uh, and then it should be uh, well there's no any um, uh, Canva or template that so it could be. Um, up to the company to decide uh, the well the kind of uh, pitch pitch deck to to apply, knowing that uh, there will be only ten minutes to present, uh, plus uh, forty five minutes uh, of question and answers. This is during the interview. So the uh, evaluation criteria. So uh, in the in the past uh, semi instrument phase two, there were in the impact. Um, with uh, a more um, uh, having more weight in the evaluation because it was the 50 percent of uh, of the evaluation um, while uh, now with the accelerator all the three um, uh, criteria have the same weight so impact excellence uh, equality and efficiency of the implementation and uh, if the company um, requires a, an equity component, then they, 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 they well, they, the company has to pass by the due diligence. But once the project will be approved, uh, the time to inform the, the company normally it should well, should be three months, so from the date of the application. And uh, the time to grant normally it's uh, so once uh, the um, the um, the beneficiaries has been uh, informed, then there are six months uh, for the signature of the grant agreement, and uh, normally well more uh, than six months for um, for uh, for the due diligence and the signature of uh, the equity agreement. So this is um, the uh, well the steps uh, about of the submission and evaluation. So you first have to submit the proposal with all the templates and the documents required. Then there will be a first remote evaluation done by expert, technical expert. Then there will be a ranking of uh, the proposal, and those uh, um, passing the the threshold, so 13 points on 15. Will be invited to the having an interview in uh, in in Brussels, and those who were um, well, would they, those who passed uh, the the inter positively the interview then will be invited to to sign the grant agreement, 
so the grant agreement for the grant and uh, in parallel that there would be in case of uh, blended finance there would be the first due diligence and then uh, the equity investment um, so this is uh, what, what is um, um, well the well, this is already what we already said. Um, about the blended finance, so the, this is the real novelty of, uh, of the accelerator. It's, uh, so it would be managed, so the, 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 the equity and the due diligence, due diligence will be um, uh, managed by the EIC fund, which is uh, a new, uh, um, organization um, based in Luxembourg and it would be a sort of a spin-off of the European uh, Investment Fund and uh, it will have the main uh, task on um, the evaluation of uh, uh, compliance uh, and, um, the, the, um, and the risk of the risk level so, um, so it's uh, it's about the uh, confirmation of um, investment amount uh, the estimation of the total financial effort uh, and uh, the, the milestones for, for together with the, together with the company. So everything will be negotiated with the with the with the company requiring the uh, the, the the equity. Um, so as uh, we said, the, the principle is to uh, well the, the, that the European Commission, so the EIC fund, will play the role. Uh, of, uh, I would say, um, um, attract, uh, um, well, able to attract new private uh, venture capitalists. So it's like um, at the beginning, um, well, try to, 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 to play the, the role of um, um, facilitator in order to uh, develop a sort of crowding in private investment. Um, and um, so the equity would be uh, um, exploited, I would say, or the value, the, the activity in the equity, in the framework of the equity would be developed in parallel of, uh, of the grant. So there would be two, officially two organizations and two, two, two institutions, uh, one uh, so the executive, executive agency dealing with, uh, with the grant, and the other one, so the EIC found dealing with the with the equity, and the, the agreements are two separate agreements. Um, so the grant will be will will will, uh, will deploy, uh, will be developed uh, on the on its own, and the equity that will be well uh, will um, we will develop it also in, on on inside. And uh, another important thing, it's the European Commission will play a role of um, passive role in the management, uh, in the daily management of the company. So it means that it will not, it will not um, um, have its say in uh, in about strategy or of the company. Of course, uh, just uh, in case uh, of uh, you know uh, problems on ethics uh, or if there is something that is going uh, not legal uh, or uh, there are some uh, um, problems, uh, legal problems which is against the uh, you know the normal uh, rules. And at the same time, there would be about um, a strategy to, to well, for a, for a for an exit of the European Commission in case uh, the um, if uh, still should be uh, agreed with the um, with the um, with the company itself. So. Um, these are the uh, the uh, the forthcoming cutoff dates. So the next one for to submit the uh, the European well the template uh, and the, the the proposal is the 8th of January. And keep in mind that there will be uh, for those who will pass the uh, the threshold, uh, um, there will be an invitation to the interview on on February. The same in the, in March with an interview uh, on May. And then, then in May for the for the, for the proposal uh, and uh, the windy windy interview in July, and last uh, would be um, oh, the 7th of October, 
uh, with an interview in November. So this is uh, all from my side and I will uh, pass, well, give the floor to my colleague, uh, Hello. Kim. Hello. Uh, Thanks very yeah. much. Thanks very much, Elena. Um, and that was a very useful oversight into what is an interesting development from the SME instrument. And of course, there are opportunities for nanomaterials all the way through that. And I particularly like the focus on the pitch deck, because that really can often differentiate between something that is a mature research project and something that's actually a, a company strategy. So uh, I think it's, it's a useful tool in Europe. So well, we will certainly follow that up with all of our NEA members to make sure that they are including this in their uh, funding searches. So I think we're going to move to our um, next presenter, which is looking at the after 2020 and the big arrival of Horizon Europe. So thanks very much indeed. So hello, Claire, and thank you for the invitations. My name is Gian Kim Wangers. I'm the NCP Brussels coordinator. Uh, NCP is the national contact point for Horizon 2020, one of the many national contact points in Europe and the associated in third countries. So official contact points for uh, the program Horizon 2020. So now today I'm happy to, to be able to give you a taste of Horizon Europe. So Horizon Europe is actually the name of the European Commission's proposal for the ninth European framework program for research and innovation. So uh, it's not yet a program. Um, so we are going to look at uh, the rationale for it and where we stand today in its construction. Um, so the proposal, yes, there is a suggestion uh, to uh, invest 100 billion euro for the next programming period. So as a reminder, the last programming period, so Horizon 2020, um, it, the, the, there were uh, 80 billion available. So there is a little increase that is expected. Um, so to, that's the actually the steps we've reached so far but uh, we are waiting for the final uh, co-decision. So it's a trilogue between the, the Commission, the, the Parliament and the Council. So as we say, so there is now a newly set Parliament and we will uh, get to know, we, we are looking forward to, to know uh, its attitude with regards to, to the proposal. Uh, why Horizon Europe? So, um, actually, the vision of uh, the Juncker's Commission um, is, a, is to, to, to have a Europe that protects, a Europe that empowers, a Europe that defends. Um, there is this uh, climate change, which is an important part of it, so with 35% uh, budgetary target, so we'll see what, what, it's, uh, what it is in the end and uh, this uh, contribution to the sustainable development goals, which is really a commitment from the Commission. And uh, finally, just the, the boosting of the Union's competitiveness and growth, which builds on this uh, observation so that it's very hard for Europe to, to, transform, to transform leadership in science into leadership in innovation and entrepreneurship. So, uh, we want to change the, the, the situation and uh, to, to, to make, uh, to renew the level of ambition and also the research and innovation agenda to be in pole position. Okay, so the, the Commission wants to uh, ensure that essential investment uh, is, is made, that the regulatory frameworks also fit for innovation. Um, it aims to become a front runner in market creating innovation and a very important part also to reconnect uh, research and innovation with citizens through uh, Europe wide uh, uh, research and innovation missions. So supporting the di dissemination of innovation for the union and investing in skills and empower the universities to become more entrepreneurial and multidisciplinary. So, 
What? So Horizon Europe, yes, it's a, we expect it to be a new program. So also it's not a, a total revolution. So the commissioner, uh, Carlos Moidas, loves to say that it's an evolution, not a revolution, because it really builds on the lessons learned from Horizon 2020. So we, you can see here are the specific objectives of the the program to, to support the creation and diffusion of high quality knowledge, to strengthen the impact of research and innovation in supporting EU policies, and to foster all forms of innovation and strengthen market deployment. So we still have this structure of the program uh, in three main pillars. The first one remaining excellent science, and the second one compared to the current structure of Horizon 2020, actually grouping the the, the global challenges with the uh, European industrial competitiveness. And the third pillar actually so is dedicated to innovative Europe. So all what uh, is currently being uh, piloted under the uh, EIC pilot actually will become a, a real pillar under Horizon Europe. So here is the structure, so you can see more details. So the first pillar has not changed, So, but you can see the change in the second pillar, so named Global Challenges and European Industrial Competitiveness with seven clusters. So health, cultural creativity and inclusive society, civil security for society, digital industry and space, climate, energy and mobility, food, bioeconomy, natural resources, agriculture, and environment. And then the third pillar with the European Innovation Council, European Innovation Ecosystems, and European Institute of Innovation and Technology. So all these are support with this cross uh, sectoral transversal pillar, which is widening participation and strengthening the European research agenda. So this is uh, again the proposal, uh, 100 billion euros, and you can see how it is envisaged to share this amount between the, the, the main pillars. So for open science, 25.8 billion, for global challenges and industrial competitiveness, 52.7 billion, and 13.5 for open innovation. And uh, yes, the envelope includes 3.5 billion um, allocated under the InvestEU fund. Uh, so it's indicative. I'm not going to, to, to give you any breakdown uh, in, within each of these pillars since uh, so far nothing is approved. So uh, let's be patient. We are all looking forward to know more on, on, on this. So what is new in Horizon Europe? So yes, as I said, so it really builds on the lessons learned from uh, Horizon 2020. So the interim evaluation was really taken into account and to come up with these key novelties. So Elena introduced you to the European uh, Innovation Council with the EIC Pathfinder and Accelerator. So it is, it will be uh, completely embedded into Horizon 20, uh, Europe, sorry, in the third pillar. Um, the missions are also uh, new to Horizon, uh, yes, to, to the research and innovation program. So the idea is to create, is to create more impact through these mission-oriented uh, mission, to these missions, um, that are uh, impact driven and that uh, really want to, to involve citizens. Um, there will also be extended possibilities for international cooperation uh, with more associated countries and with, uh, yes, it's, it's to be expected to have more uh, topics that are flagged for international cooperation open science policy, yes, uh, open access, open data, and also a new approach to, to partnerships. So these are the, the key novelties. So uh, 
yes, so you've seen so the European Innovation Council, so how it will be built, so the missions, so the missions are really uh, to, to be seen as, as a portfolio um, of actions, yes. Um, so today, so far, so missions area have been defined and the, the design process is ongoing. So there are boards for each of the five mission sorry, areas that have been defined. Um, so I'm, yes, I may tell you the, which are these five missions. Um, so the, the first area is adaption, adaptation to climate change, including societal transformation mission. Second is the cancer mission. The third is healthy ocean, seas, coastal and inland waters mission. The fourth one is climate neutral and smart cities mission area. And the, the fifth one is about soil, health and food. So these are areas and of course now the, um, the missions, the specific missions need to be defined uh, within these areas. International cooperation, so, as I say, so there will be uh, re reinforced opportunities to cooperate um, with third countries and uh, open science across the, the program. What does it mean? So yes, fair uh, and open data and open access with uh, monitoring system in place to ensure compliance with Horizon Europe provisions. Okay, so the, there is also a new approach to, to partnership. So the, for following the, the Commission's proposal for Horizon Europe, so there were 12 candidates for institutional, institutionalized partnerships uh, within eight partnerships area also. So areas were defined and there, 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 there were um, suggestions for these institutional partnerships. And as you probably know, so there is still this consultation that is ongoing and for which you still have the possibility to react until the 6th of November. So the proposed partnership cover the following topics. So we have uh, EU Africa Research Partnership on Health Security to tackle infectious diseases, uh, innovative health initiative, key digital technologies, smart networks and services, uh, European metrology, transforming Europe's rail system, integrated air traffic management, clean aviation, circular bio-based Europe, clean hydrogen, and safe and automatic road transport and innovative SME. So these are the, yes, the, the partnerships for which you still have the opportunity just to, to, to give your say. So how? So yes, here not a total revolution, but the aim to simplify uh, to keep going on the simplification process that has started, yes, already uh, under Horizon 2020. So simplify the rules and better align uh, also with, with the financial regulation, um, increase the use of simplified forms of grants. So uh, Virginia told you about the, the lump sum um, for one of the calls. So this um, this scheme will be uh, extended and there will be more opportunity for this uh, possibility based on the pilot experience that is currently ongoing in this um, end of the, 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 the program. Um, a broader acceptance of your cost accounting practices uh, from the company, so it is really aimed to facilitate your, your life and also an enhanced cross-reliance on audits. Um, yes, benefiting beneficiaries taking part in several union programs uh, is very important because also the cooperation, the synergies between the, the programs is uh, deeply encouraged in, under Horizon Europe. 
strategic planning so is ongoing and so that's the process that will allow us to in the, in the end have work programs that will be published and uh, for us just ready to advise you and also to promote the, the calls uh, as of uh, 2021. So the strategic planning defines uh, multi-annual work programs and the calls for proposals. So uh, this planning is ongoing. Um, transparency and stakeholder involvement. So you are probably among the ones who reacted to uh, the open consultation. So there was a possibility to react until uh, three weeks ago. Um, there is this prioritization, flexibility to align to political priorities. Um, there was a, there is also a name um, to, to to internal program coherence and synergies with other programs, and also the aim to make it um, technically possible and legally possible. Just this facilitation. Um, so. Um, Yes, so we'll, we are really looking forward actually just to to be able to 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 show what's in the work program. So we'll uh, probably have them ready by the second part of next year in order to be ready to launch Horizon Europe in 2021. So that's the next steps, strategic planning. So uh, we are waiting for the end of 20. 19 to have the uh, formal engagement with the new parliament and the drafting of the first work program for right. having the first course second half of 2020 so useful links uh, on horizon europe and just a word on the ncp services so i'm from ncp brussels i'm coordinator and i'm also ncp for infrastructure Sci science within for society and widening parts of horizon 2020 um, like all the ncps in the world we have a host organization and ours is uh, named for brussels actually it's quite young agency created on first january 2018 and which results from the merge of three associations, Satrium Brussels, Brussels Invest and Export and Impulse Brussels. So as you can see, we are very connected to the entrepreneur uh, ecosystem in Brussels with 99,000 entrepreneurs uh, in Brussels. Uh, we are 320 staff members and our main clients actually are beyond these entrepreneurs are also the public authorities, the universities, the research, and uh, non-profit organizations, whether they are uh, Belgian or international non-profit organizations based in Brussels, we have a lot. Um, we are, of course, a, a client-centered agency and we provide our clients with free guidance. It's uh, really part of our core business. Um, the aim is to contribute to sustainable growth of Brussels economy to create jobs and also to make Brussels uh, an attractive place where to live and to work. So myself, I'm part of the unit, the business unit, um, Innovation and in Internationalization, which hosts NCP Brussels, Enterprise Europe Network, um, and Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs. So these are the three missions of our business unit. And uh, this is how we are connected to the other missions, departments of our agencies. As you can see, we are connected to uh, many clusters actually that are also located here um, within uh, Brussels. Uh, our main missions are to sustain the Brussels-based stakeholders, accessibility and participation to Horizon 2020. And like all the NCPs in the world, we commit to the uh, guiding principles that have been set by the European Commission. So we provide support uh, services uh, freely. Um, and uh, yes, we, we really give specialist advice. So we support you under Horizon 2020, second and third pillar plus research infrastructure, also spreading excellence, widening participation and science within for society. Um, all along the client journey, we are also connected with many NCPs in the world in different sectors, including ICT, health, 
societies, food and bioeconomy, energy transport, climate, and uh, also we are connected to the other NCPs on legal and financial matters. Um, so the Belgian national contact points, so they are, yes, a couple of them, so you will find all the information uh, in the slides. It just to tell you that, of course, since the uh, Horizon Europe is still a proposal at this stage, so there are not yet mm, officially nominated NCPs for Horizon Europe, but of course, uh, NCP Brussels will still be there uh, to help all the stakeholders take part in the new program and just succeed and uh, keep raising the success rate of Brussels stakeholders um, yeah, within Horizon Europe. So thank you very much for your, your attention. And Claire, I give you back the floor. Thanks very much indeed. And that was obviously a huge amount of information in the amount of time that we had available. So I am going to rapidly pass the, slide, the screen over to our next presenter. And this is where we get to look at what some of our companies have used um, Horizon Europe for and how they found it uh, you know, professionally and sort of business development wise useful. But I think what I would like to also say is that for nanomaterials in particular, uh, just while I'm looking for Lorenzo, here we go. So Lorenzo should be zooming to your screens any moment now. Okay, that's lovely. While Lorenzo gets ready, um, from a nanomaterials perspective, we know from quite intensive discussions with the European Commission that the NMBP program, which, is nan which has nano specifically named, will move more towards an advanced materials perspective. So nanomaterials will not be ring fenced in a corner to look at you know, where projects specifically look at nano. It's gonna be much more part of an advanced materials focus which from my perspective is good because it means that it can be spread much more widely and without comment through lots of different programs. So it's not about looking for an NMBP equivalent program. It's about looking for the end applications that materials can be applied into and the sort of characterization and the safety aspects become an integral part of that rather than a separate standalone element. But uh, I will hand you over to Lorenzo now, who can look, tell you how he, as a small company, has been using um, EU funding to help build his company. So take it away, Lorenzo. Thank you, Claire, for the introduction. And I'm really happy to share uh, our experience with uh, uh, EU funds. Um, so I'm Lorenzo Zullo, the co-founder and managing director of, of Chemical. Uh, Chemical is a small company that deals mainly with the extraction of chemical information from uh, uh, worldwide information sources. Uh, we are, besides having expertise in the regulatory environment, we have also deep knowledge on, on IT, and that's what helps us to uh, automatize the process of extracting and classifying the, 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 the information. Uh, the idea is to help companies to better understand the, what is going on with their chemicals, uh, we, if there are potential upcoming regulatory threats, and to understand also from a timeline perspective which could be the most critical chemicals that companies could have to uh, to deal with in the in the future. Uh, but today I really want to focus on a specific project. It's called the uh, ChemChain that we are uh, working on since a while, and it's through this project that we are uh, having access to uh, European funds. So the problem that we are trying to address with the with this project is the um, uh, the transfer of information on chemicals along the supply chain, and currently there is not a unique integrated system to allow uh, all actors in the supply chain to have a single communication challenge for transferring information on, on chemicals, and this is a particular big challenge because the supply chain can be, can be very uh, very complex and therefore uh, it takes really a, a big amount of effort and not, it's not always efficient the way in which information from chemical manufacturers flow down the, the, the overall uh, supply chain. So the solution that we are uh, developing is uh, uh, the use of blockchain for helping transferring information along the supply chain. Uh, it works on two ways. On uh, one side, uh, it's possible for chemical manufacturer and, and to transfer down the supply chain certain information that on chemicals that remain then uh, embedded into the, uh, the product and the materials. Uh, but also on the other way around, uh, if you are uh, a downstream user or a producer of an article, you are able to 
mm, uh, get a better understanding of the information coming from your supplier and also uh, if you are a chemical manufacturer you can also have a better understanding of where and in which sector your, your chemicals are, are used. The idea is to use a, a system of digital tokens that move uh, along the supply chain together with the chemicals following materials and products and gaining information why the substances are, are, are moving along the supply chain. Uh, I'm not entering too much into the details of this project. You can uh, check our website for see more details, but the, the range of application is very broad. Uh, we are dealing, for, for example, with the transferring of some safety data sheets, uh, transferring information nanomaterials to comply with nano registry obligation, uh, communication of substances very concern, and, uh, and so on. And also, another important part of this project, and that's also where there is a good fit with the European project, is the fact that it has the potentiality to generate a huge amount of data to better understand how substances are used across sectors and products and across regions uh, uh, world, worldwide. So the first step that we did, uh, besides developing the, the idea and the concept, was to establish a team with a multi uh, expertise and one important thing was also to have a, a, pro, a person that with deep knowledge on European projects to have uh, help us to get better access to uh, European opportunities and we also ensured since the beginning uh, an advisory board to ensure that whatever we develop is in line with what the industry are, uh, is uh, requiring. Um, in terms of timeline, we started in 2017 with the development of an initial concept and a white paper. Um, there was uh, um, a lot of uh, work to prove the concept during 2018 and only this year we started developing a, a prototype with the idea to develop some pilot cases by before the end of the year and to go to implementation and scale up in 2020. And that's where uh, in 2019 we had the first access to, uh, to European funds and that was in the framework of uh, the SME's instruments phase one in particular, we have received uh, 50,000 euro uh, for, uh, to be used for running a feasibility study during the next uh, six months. So what this means, it means that with this budget we need to develop a more detailed business plan uh, to better understand what is the market need and the, the acceptance of our product from, from the market. And that could potentially give us the possibility to have then access to a phase two uh, where you can receive funds, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, up to two millions for really implementing the project itself. So it's a really very big opportunity what the SME's instrument is, is providing. And, uh, and this is a budget that is dedicated uh, to a specific company. So there is no need to have a consortium for, uh, for obtaining it. Uh, meanwhile, um, as part also this feasibility study, but also to have uh, better feedback from the market, we have already engaged also with different industry associations to get their feedback on what we are doing and also to collect uh, their interest in, uh, in case we will uh, proceed with the uh, uh, additional type of European funds, for instance, in the framework of uh, European project that requires a consortium. And uh, um, beside uh, obtaining funds from the SME's instrument, we have been also involved uh, in European project, uh, broader ones, uh, through NIA, and I think that was a very good opportunity that we received by being part of this uh, network of nanotechnology industries. And the first project is the, the Go for Nano. Uh, which deals with the governance of nanomaterials and in particular thanks to the work that we are doing on our blockchain project uh, we were uh, contacted to have a, a small part into this uh, go for nano project and in particular to explore uh, what is the potential of blockchain for uh, managing the data on the safety of nanomaterial along the supply chain. So this go for nano uh, is uh, started uh, this year and it's a four-year project and I think it was a very great opportunity for us uh, to uh, try to have a, um, a direct contact uh, with, uh, uh, with a broad range of, uh, of stakeholders involving both authorities and individual companies and to uh, have a more deeper assessment on how our idea on using blockchain could fit into a specific case of communication and management of data on safety of nanomaterial. So that's the go for nano project. Uh, we have been then involved uh, 
as a member of the consortium of, of NINDOS, that's another European project which has just been submitted, uh, so hopefully it will be financed. And in that specific project, we had the opportunity to um, play a role for uh, uh, moving from the te theoretical assessment of the potential of blockchain uh, in the go for nano to a more practical implementation for developing a platform itself uh, in order to transfer um, safety by design uh, information on nanomaterials throughout the supply chain. So it's an additional project that could potentially give us the, the possibility to have uh, some uh, substantial funds for developing a, a, a real case application in the field of nanotechnologies. We are also uh, looking at, at upcoming uh, European calls, and in particular there is one the which deadline is uh, in February, and we are currently preparing it, and that uh, um, is a call oriented to develop uh, um, a product that could support uh, uh, circular economic uh, models, and we think that uh, generating a better understanding of chemicals along the supply chain is certainly something that can help uh, and facilitate the circularity of materials uh, uh, throughout the supply chain. Um, so just to summarize a bit uh, our uh, our journey with this specific project, uh, as I mentioned before, we started in 2007, 17, uh, we have been developing the, the, the concept more in details uh, during a one year and a half, and now we are in the phase in 2019 where we are developing a prototype and we plan to have a pilot uh, by the end of the year, beginning of 2020. Um, there has been a lot of industry engagement since the beginning of the uh, of the project, and especially in 2019, we also increased the outreach activities towards authorities because we think that our project fits well with what uh, um, governments are trying to achieve in terms of transparency in the supply chain and sustainability model. And uh, we are also in contact with the potential investors that are really interested into the into our project and would like to. Uh, invest, they believe in our project, they think it could be a good uh, uh, product for uh, the future. So all this in parallel with the European activities, so as I mentioned we had the SME's instrument phase one, which we have received the funds, uh, we are will soon apply for the phase two and in parallel to the, uh, to the call for um, product related to circular economy and on top of that uh, within the European framework uh, we have been participating to the go for nano and we are uh, currently waiting for the outcome of the project proposal for Nindos, which is the second project in which we could be potentially involved through NIA. So uh, as you can see, it's a lot of work uh, on multiple fronts. Uh, so probably my message is that yes, the, uh, there are a lot of opportunities uh, in Europe in terms of funds, also for small medium enterprises. Uh, you could have these uh, access to funds as an individual company or as a, as a part of a, a bigger consortium with the other bigger player in it. And uh, But it's a lot of work. So uh, it's very important that you have deep knowledge on which are the opportunity and to ensure that they fit well with the uh, policy objective, but also with your internal plans um, in order to keep track and proceed in parallel on multiple fronts with, uh, uh, with your project. So I think that's a bit uh, a sharing of our experience. I'm available to provide clarification to be contacted also after the webinar if someone needs more clarification. Thank you. That's fantastic. Thanks very much, Lorenzo. And Lorenzo's story that he's presented is absolutely typical of a small company, particularly, particularly quite a young one. Um, and I was a national contact point way back in framework five, which makes me about a million years old. And the lesson learned all the time is always keep looking for things that might be useful for you for funding, but don't let it distort what your organization does, because otherwise you will find yourself contractually obliged to undertake activities that do not actually build the company. And if you're, if you're a small company with maybe two or three people, if you've got 100% of your attention focused on something that is not your company mission, your company is going to start failing and sort of fading away because you're, you're doing projects instead of company development. But Lorenzo has done it really well because he's looked at it very carefully and he's consi consistently looked for opportunities that he could take that fit the mission of his company. But we could pretty much talk about that all day. So I will now move to our next company presenter who takes us right to the start of the um, 
to right to the other end of the spectrum, which is, of course, large companies. So I'm really pleased to invite, uh, have Solvay with us today, who have taken part in a number of projects over the years, but from a very different perspective than uh, Lorenzo. So Jacques Aurelien, are you still with us? Yes, I am, and I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you very well, thank you very much. So uh, do you want to present your perspective from uh, Solvay uh, and just tell me when you need to change slides? Okay, perfect. So, um, so thank you, Claire, for this uh, invitation uh, and the opportunity to present kind of a uh, feedback on how Solvay is dealing with, um, so in this case, the nanotopic and EU projects. Um, as you may know, Solvay is not an SME, it's a big company in the chemical sector, and the talk today is really only dedicated to the so-called NMBP, so the call dedicated to nanotechnologies. Uh, I didn't know how familiar the attendance could be with the former two frameworks, the FP7 and the Horizon 20. So on the next slide, I have just tried to sum up really what was the main focus of these two different calls. We had the new one, which was presented a bit earlier today, which is called Horizon Europe. But as you will see, the FP7 and the Horizon 20, uh, the there was some difference basically and one of them is the funding rate where for the fp7 you could have a rate of 75 percent or reason 2020 you could go to 100 percent and also the time to grant is completely different we, we had in the past about a year between the really first moment the dossier was provided and it's reduced to eight months and it's quite important in first the time to build and to find all the partners in a project, but also in the effort you will have to spend to really build the proposal and hopefully to succeed in this uh, in this dossier. Um, the next slide is really dealing with the nano safety cluster. So for every company, for every academics, I would really recommend to first gather information on this platform. This is really a place where you will find information about the past experience, the projects, you will have an abstract on all the projects which were funded. Uh, you will have contacts. It, it's really a place where you will find really a lot of information. Then if you really decide to jump on a call, you will see on the next slide, typically you have two different possibilities. The first one is to be a consortium member. In this case, you will have a proactive work. You will have tasks, you will have to deliver something and you will be, I would say, on, on the spot. You will be part of the team generating new data and, and in close collaboration with other partners. Another type of uh, participation to this FP7 or Horizon 2020 and I guess Horizon Europe project is to be part of the so-called advisory board. In this case, you will not provide any new information, any new data, you will not generate information, but the role or your role or the role of the various members of this advisory board will be really to guide the full team for the direction of, of the full project. Meaning that you will provide more um, your feeling about is it at the end implementable in a company? Is it something which is really responding to the original request from the call? So it's completely different in terms of interaction with the members but it's the, the two different uh, situation could exist. And the two next slide is really to introduce to what you can do being either a consortium member, that was the case for these two projects for Solvay in the FP7 Nano solution in the Horizon 2020 go for nano So go for nano you had uh, a very uh, short introduction uh, by Lorenzo just before. Uh, Solvay is also part of this one. Uh, as, as already said, it's an ongoing project. And within this project, we are more uh, providing input on the um, first knowledge of company about the regulation and what could be done in the future, how to get familiar with this, and also to collect information from more generally the society and the acceptance of nanomaterial by them. Uh, for nano solution, it was completely different. We were really generating information and the scope of this project was to, to provide kind of an IT tool to, um, to 
prima facie, I would say, know or have an indication on what could be the hazards of a new nanomaterial. And both were completely different. And for this uh, nano solution, we were also at the end uh, beta testing this new tool. So these two interactions were completely different, but at the end, it was really uh, interesting and important to be part of these teams, uh, especially to, to be known by the network of these partners, but also to get familiar with these new technologies which we have embraced since these projects. On the next two slides, you will have information about two other projects where Solvay is, in this case, part of the advisory board. So we are part of, of Gracious. Um, Gracious is a, an also an ongoing project, uh, which is um, really building on how to group nanomaterials and based on the new EU regulation, which will start January 2020 on nanoforms. So it's really more to how we can implement this regulation and which tool could be developed to support industry uh, to be really compliant with this new regulation. NanoSoviet is a completely different project, really working on nanoinformatics. So it's really more on how to build models based on uh, like omics data and what could be used really also to support or to generate more data um, without the use of, uh, let's say, animal testing. So in, in, in these two cases, the, the, the interest from survey was more to get familiar with the project, but also um, to be more uh, in a benchmarking situation with regard to new tools that we were not yet familiar with. And the last slide is about my take-home message. Um, so the first thing, when you want to jump in one EU project, is really to choose your playground. As mentioned by uh, Claire just before, do not try to enter a game where you do not have really an interest. It can be really time-consuming, and uh, it's also something which could be really easy in terms of administration. Uh, when you decide, because you have an interest to jump in a project, then you need to choose really properly the involvement you will have at the end. Uh, it's really important. You, you need to devote the time you have planned and you need to deliver what the group or the consortium is expecting from you. Um, as a general feedback, you will always have more written than expected being part of such a project, either direct, directly or after a few years. This kind of project can really accelerate your innovation because you will be at the right place at the right time and I would say with the right partners. It will of course help you to develop your network if you're starting a new business or a new project and so far I have to say that I have not seen a very high industry involvement in, in some projects. So when, when you are contacted, typically you are highly welcome to jump in these kind of projects. And, and basically my advice is, is if you have some interest, then just get involved in such project. You will, you will really find um, opportunities by doing such a work. And that was my last slide, Claire. So if you have any question, I guess you, we have still one presentation yes. and then we'll have some time. That's fantastic. Thanks, Roger Corellia. Um, it's interesting the commonality of the messages you get, whether you're a large company or a small company, it's choose the thing that is most directly relevant to your organization, because then everything you do is also a part of building your organization. And many of the NMBP projects for that have brought in our nano companies, they're more about building the ecosystem as a whole than individual small innovations. So it's been a lot about enabling nano as a as an as a technology rather than coming out with specific products and processes. And certainly in Horizon 2020, a lot of that work has helped to go into support the regulatory structure, the standard structures that we have policy thoughts. So the Commission has learned a lot from these projects. I think as we move to Horizon Europe, we will get, we will, we will be expecting those frameworks to be more mature for Nano, and so we'll be looking more at specific innovations, particularly linked to um, circular economy, which will be sort of one of the big things driving Horizon Europe. But thank you again to both Lorenzo and Jacarelli for extremely useful insights from companies. And I think now we're going to turn back for the last quick presentation to Barbara. Is that right? 
Yeah, exactly. Super. I'm really going to put this back to Virginia from my long list of people I could hand the screen to. And if you guys accept the screen, then we can go to the last presentation. Lovely. I can see that really well. Thank you. So, Barbara, you just want to put it on um, full slideshow. Okay. There we go. And then okay. we will take it away. So my name is Barbara Andreani. I'm uh, co-heading the Internationalization and Innovation Business Unit together with Gian here in Hub Brussels. Uh, I will move from the NCP approach to another service, uh, which is hosted by our host organization. Um, and perhaps some of you uh, know, for those who are not, uh, I'm going to provide you the information on Enterprise Europe Network, uh, making a focus on the Enterprise Europe Brussels. Um, so the services uh, which we can deliver to the Brussels-based entity, but for your information, the same services are available throughout the, the whole network. So whatever, wherever you are based as an entity, a legal entity, you can enjoy these services from our colleagues from the network. So Enterprise Europe Network is a network um, set up by the Commission um, 11 years ago as a merger of two previous existing uh, networks. And the purpose is to help uh, especially uh, small, medium-sized enterprises uh, to go international, uh, make their international development through uh, technology transfer to open innovation, research uh, and, and development, and uh, also through commercial uh, um, opportunities. So the added value of this network is that uh, each member of the network is locally based, meaning that it really capitalizes on the uh, knowledge and the expertise is got at the local level, uh, combined to the fact of being part of a very huge network covering more than uh, 60 countries. So there are um, more or less uh, uh, 3,000 uh, full-time full -time equivalents active within this network, uh, based in uh, more than 600 uh, organizations uh, similar to Hub Brussels, uh, Chamber of Commerce, Universities, and so on. And we cover actually now 65 countries, meaning uh, European uh, member states countries plus associated countries and business cooperation uh, centers in, uh, in, in the world, which is the purpose of this network. Uh, it's mainly oriented to SMEs, but for your information, we do uh, um, provide services to other players, including Solvay, for example, or uh, uh, or NIA, uh, so we uh, we could say that our services are mainly um, split up in three main pillars: services around the international partnerships. So we do facilitate the identification of potential partners for uh, European projects. offers and requests of collaboration from all the network members and behind the network members there are of course their clients. We use uh, matchmaking events uh, in order to facilitate the meetings, uh, the face-to-face -face meetings between uh, potential entities, entities becoming potential um, uh, partners in, in a deal and uh, also we organize ad hoc company missions uh, so with the delegation of companies uh, which is between five and ten companies as a maximum but it's really customized while for the matchmaking events we do rely on existing opportunities such as 
such as fairs or big conferences. Then we have the pillar related to advisory um, services around the EU legisl legislation standards, uh, around the market intelligence or uh, CE marking or IPR issues. Um, uh, again, for making the international collaborations uh, um, set on a, on a very good basis. And then we have uh, uh, the third pillar, which is much more related to innovation. And this is, uh, um, um, this kind of services are, um, let's say, limited to a very selected number of companies. In, more in particular, we have uh, the uh, services known as key account management services for the winners of the SME instrument, uh, the former phase one, the current phase two, and uh, uh, already in place IAC um, formats, and then uh, an evaluation of the way uh, innovation is managed within a company and how to improve uh, this, uh, uh, this management in order to have a, an increased uh, return on investment. So these are the three main pillars. Uh, as far as uh, uh, these services, I repeat, are available all around the network for Brussels, our services are delivered by a small consortium consisting of us, uh, Hub Brussels, uh, coordinator of this consortium, and our partner, uh, Bessie. Uh, so we, we gathered together uh, 11 years ago because we were former Innovation Relay Center on the one side and uh, Aero Info Center on the other side, and these were the two networks that the, the Commission wanted to put together in order to put uh, to make um, entrepreneurs' life easier. So easier. So um, under a practical point of view, uh, the split is uh, commercial uh, support and legislation and the CE marking on the one side with BESI, technology transfer, open innovation, R&D, uh, together with us, but this, the purpose is really to help companies or other entities to make the most of international opportunities. How do we work? Um, we mainly work in a funnel approach, so we start with the um, dissemination of information, awareness raising, whatever the activity uh, for such a purpose is used. So we do organize workshops uh, uh, together with our NCP colleagues, which is the case of uh, today. Uh, we do run a company visit in order to uh, understand which are the strategies and the needs of a given company. We develop information, spread information on the social media, website and newsletter, and then we go down to the funnel with a very one-to-one -one personalized support uh, through this uh, technical audit, uh, customized action in order to identify the most suitable opportunities um, for, for example, the participation in matchmaking, uh, matchmaking events, for identifying also um, supports, uh, supporting services related to the beneficiaries of the uh, European Innovation Council Accelerator. Um, just to give you a a couple of examples. So I mentioned before, we do use uh, as a network uh, a powerful database. I went and picked up uh, some uh, opportunity, a couple of opportunities uh, which are disseminated into uh, the network and which are uh, nanotech related. As you can see, for example, one coming from Italy. Um, she's, this company is active in the nano field technology. But these technologies are applicable to the pharmaceutical, cosmetics, and uh, nutritional applications, meaning then they are looking for, for, uh, for interested the potential user, users coming from these industries. Or another one, uh, they made an hyperlink to the nano uh, technologies uh, uh, keywords because they want to reach uh, this, uh, these users and they want to show how nanotechs are, um, are important and are useful also in other, other uh, domains. So as you can see, you have hyperlinks, so um, meaning that you can have the all information detailed with the whole description, with the advantages and uh, the, the kind of partnership 
vote and then if you want to uh, get in touch with the uh, with the company behind this, uh, these opportunities. Uh, it's simple because you, you can get in touch with us or our colleagues from out of the network and have the contact details uh, provided that you uh, agree in disclosing your, your contact details as well. Here I'm going, I'm showing some banners, actually the, the, um, the events where we were active uh, in, in the past or are currently now um, in, um, uh, in these days, notably today and uh, um, till uh, tomorrow. Uh, for, for example, the meet in life science, meet in Italy for life sciences. So you have here some examples where the nanotechnologies are tackled um, as a, uh, an option to be used in different uh, um, collaborations, uh, ranging from uh, food industries, textile industries. As you can see, you had also innovative industry to for, for smart growth and um, uh, notably NIA participated in last year edition. So the purpose is to really facilitate the identification of uh, new inter interlocutors uh, with whom making business, developing business, whatever the kind I mentioned before. Um, so, which is uh, the main added values of these events? You receive a customized services support because we go through the opportunities. So we have a, a plan, a calendar of um, events, plenty of opportunities. So, according to the specific needs, we do the selection, we propose the selection, we prepare together with the potential participant his participation. Which is large, which is linked, as I mentioned before, to large fairs or conferences. Uh, so, if you plan to go and visit that fair of that conference, you um, and perhaps also have um, a booth there. You uh, you optimize your time because with one only with one trip, you can organize your agenda in order to optimize optimize really your presence on the spot with the Enterprise Europe Network matchmaking event, visiting the, the fair and participating, for example, to the conferences or the workshop taking place there. And the added value is that then we uh, help in the follow-up till the moment a deal is signed. Uh, all these matchmaking events cover all sectors, not only nanotech. So if you want to transfer the use of nanotechs in other sectors, uh, these are the place to be taken into account to exploit these opportunities. Uh, with, in, with reference to the innovation management services, uh, these services, uh, as I mentioned before, are only for the SMEs and uh, um, they really have to be um, ready to um, let us uh, take a picture of the situation, uh, identify the uh, the, 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 the aspects of the innovation management which are really good and perhaps identify some room for improvements in order to have a return on investment which is impactful and that can, you can measure. So if you are interested, don't hesitate to let us know because there are uh, some opportunities still available this year but it's a recurrent uh, um, uh, service so next year will be available as well. Um, our network and, and Enterprise Europe of Brussels as well do rely on the expertise of the network, which work on all uh, industrial domains, but uh, we also um, exploited the opportunities of clustering ourselves in vertical key sectors, among which you see also nano and micro, te micro technologies and also other sector where um, um, nanotech can be um, cross-cutting so, uh, of interest, plus uh, the expertise coming from uh, thematic groups, so, so where the expertise can uh, uh, be helpful in supporting our, our uh, companies and our entities. Um, how can we help you? Just get in touch with Virginia or myself for Brussels for the rest of the network. And here I, I get the opportunity to show the whole team 
and that added value uh, from Hub and notably from our business unit we can bring you because uh, uh, the majority of the team, uh, perhaps uh, the, the, the business is too, uh, too dark, but uh, the majority of our team has a double hat, meaning um, it's uh, um, an Enterprise Europe Network advisor and an NCP in a given thematic. So when we do uh, and speak, uh, go to speak uh, to one, one of our advisor, one of us, uh, we listen really with the double head, so we are able to provide um, advices and uh, and help uh, using the, the networks that we do belong to. So I think that I'm quite on time with the, the presentation. Uh, if you uh, have questions, don't hesitate. Thanks. Thanks very much indeed, Barbara. And we have jammed you full of information for nearly 100 no yeah i think getting on for 100 minutes uh so well done to everybody who survived until the end i think um what i'm going to do now is uh stop the recording so i'll say farewell to our millions of youtube followers and switch that